Hello my fellow Archons and welcome to another video. What you see before you here are the four Unchained decks I was able to get my hands on while at Keyforge Celebration 2022. Um, and essentially the way it worked is that you would get one Unchained deck um, in your goodie bag and then for every two Unchained duels that you lost, so you'd sit down with somebody else who was also playing with an Unchained deck and then if you lost two of those games, uh, then you could go up to the HQ desk and get purchase another Unchained deck, and you could do that up to three times. So this was my the one from the goodie bag, or one of these is at least, um, and then I managed to get three more. So I lost six games total, and was able to get my hands on three more Unchained decks. So today I just wanted to show you guys what I have in these decks, what's cool about them, sort of how Unchained feels to play, um, and then that'll be it. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so this was the first Unchained deck that I got to open, Moonville, the Duck Build, with Unfathomable, Equidon, and Logos. Um, so one of the cool things about Unchained decks is that houses um, from all throughout Keyforge's history can appear in them, not just the ones um, in like the most recent set. So Logos is not a Winds of Exchange house, but it is appearing here with Equidon and Unfathomable, which are Winds of Exchange houses. Um, also in Unchained decks, you can get cards from the entire Keyforge card pool. Uh, so most Unchained decks are actually comprom are composed of cards from all the sets, call the Archons, through Winds of Exchange. The Maverick rate is also boosted super high, so you get to see lots of Mavericks in these decks as well. Um, so this deck's token creature is Priest, two power, unfathomable, action, exhaust an enemy creature. Put that over there. All right, so starting off here, we have Stir Crazy. Each ready creature captures one from its opponent. That's a new unfathomable card. Um, Azure Basin Outpost, action, put a friendly creature on the bottom of its owner's deck if you do exhaust three enemy creatures. Uh, we have Kelpminder, which is 5 power. It's the common enhancer for Unfathomable with a capture and 2 draw. And uh, we'll sort of speed through these cards. I really just want to show you what's cool about each of these individual decks and not necessarily uh, just the entire deck itself. Uh, we have Fathom Reaver, Fathom Reaver with a capture. I think this one was spoiled on Tabletop Rail, I think? Play make a token creature. While you control a token creature, your opponent refills their hand to one less card during the draw card step. Uh, Befuddle. Now this is a really weird card. I might just have to make a whole video about this card because it's so strange and its nuances are very interesting. Play. Choose a house on your opponent's identity card. During their next turn they cannot play cards of other houses. Uh, very strange. Go ahead and read that again because it's kind. It, it takes a few read-throughs to really start understanding what it's meant to do. So there's that one. Um, Adult Swim. Some good token creature counters. Uh, play. Put each creature with power 3 or lower on top of its owner's deck in a random order. This deck has two of those, uh, Wicolia, Sparkfist, the Ciceris, General Sherman. And here's our first Maverick, the Unfathomable Finch Cloak. It's supposed to be in Shadows, but here it is in Unfathy. Um, and the artwork, the purples in this artwork are complemented by the Unfathomable frame so well. I love this, it looks so beautiful. And then moving into Logos, we have Discombobulator, Resembling Automaton, Sanitation Engineer, Eddie, Quantum Finger Trap, Jar Goggle, Cutthroat Research. Our next Maverick, a Logos Jammer Pack, which looks pretty neat. Novu Archaeologist, Spectral Tunneler, Mobius Scroll, Twin Bolt Emission. And now we'll move into Equidon. So Equidon obviously is all new cards. There aren't cards from different sets with Equidon. So first off, we have a Maverick, actually. A, an Equidon, Beware the Ides, with a draw. Looks pretty cool. Trade Secrets, uh, play, discard any number of Equidon cards from your hand. Steal one Ember for each card discarded this way. Super strong card. I heard that somebody managed to steal like five Ember using this card. They like played this, discarded five Equidon cards out of their hand, and just stole five straight up. It's like Equidon has some really powerhouse cards in this set, and this is one of them. Out Negotiate, here's another one of them. Even more Ember control in the form of Steal. Uh, choose a card in your opponent's discard pile. Steal Ember equal to the number of Ember bonus icons on that card, and put that card on the bottom of its owner's deck. All right, I'm gonna put these four aside because they're super cool and, and I need to show them off separately. Uh, we have Shopping Spree, discard your hand, draw a card for each card discarded this way. Kind of like uh, you get a Helmsman Spears sort of effect, maybe hopefully drawn to some more Equidon cards. Uh, mass Buyout with a draw, destroy each creature. Each player gains Ember equal to half the number of the creatures they controlled that were destroyed this way, rounded up. So there's some Ember Burst, obviously it requires some decent timing, but it's a pretty cool, cool one. Generous Offer, classic Equidon card here. Destroy a friendly creature if you do, steal two Ember. 
Auction off, purge an artifact, its controller gains one ember. And then the incredible Equidon honors Kesis. I was so, so hyped to see this when I first opened up this deck. I think maybe with cards like, uh, like Shopping Spree, you could actually get this to go off in Equidon. I mean, because it usually shows up in Logos, and Dark Tidings Logos has lots of really good ways to get Honors Kesis to go off. But in Equidon, I'm not so sure. Shopping Spree may help with that. Um, if you can get lots of stealing and like get a lot of Ember away from the opponent and into your pool with cards like Trade Secrets, um, Generous Offer, things like that, Honors Kesis might actually be able to go off in this deck. And now for the four cards that I wanted to show separately. Um, we have this guy right here. He's a rare five power Equidon creature, Conductor Jeroya. After Reap, ready each friendly buggy artifact. Now he came with three uh, buggy artifacts here. Uh, the first one is Shigziso Buggy. Action, destroy a friendly creature. If you do, gain two Ember. Uh, Shiznyasi Buggy, or however you say that. Action, lose one Ember if you do draw three cards. And Shizyoku Buggy. Action, reveal two cards from your hand. If they share a house, discard them and make a token creature. Now, Conductor Droya reads, after re ready each friendly Buggy artifact. So these guys are actually super cool together. I had one game where I managed to get all four of these cards to go off um, over a couple turns. So I had Droya out there with all three of these artifacts. I was able to lose one ember, draw three cards, and then reveal two cards from my hand, make a token creature, destroy a friendly creature, and gain two ember, reap with a Droya, ready all three of them, and then do it all over again. So all three of these together with a Droya is a lot of fun. And I think it's super cool that I got all three of them. So I wonder if Droya always comes with all three of them, or if sometimes maybe he comes with only two of them, or maybe two of one and one of the other. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen this guy in any other decks that other people have opened, but either way, super cool, a lot of fun. And uh, that's my first Unchained deck. Let's move on to the second one. All right, so my second Unchained deck is Paladraptor, the Marquis of the Locality with Untamed, Mars, and Sanctum. And this deck is probably one of the cooler Unchained decks that I opened, and it's all because of one specific card that we'll get to. Um, this deck's token creature is the Sanctum 2 Power Squire with Taunt. And it's just that. It's just a two-power taunt creature out there. So if you get lots of these guys out there, uh, you'll have a very heavily taunted battle line. All right, so starting off with the Untamed here, we have Toad, Xenos Blood Shadow, Vault's Blessing, which is kind of funny because this deck doesn't actually have any mutants in it. So it's like the most useless Vault's Blessing ever. We have the Untamed Bonithing. Looks pretty cool. Creed of Nurture, Molefin, Camouflage. They're everywhere. Inca the Spider, Halicore, Nocturnal Maneuver, Mimicry, and then into the Sanctum with Squire Recruitment, make a token creature for each friendly night creature. Lightbringer Outpost, action, put a friendly creature on the bottom of its owner's deck if you do a friendly creature captures three. Honorable Claim, each friendly night creature captures one ember. Muster, make a token creature. If your opponent has more ember than you, archive Muster. Absolve, heal one damage from each creature. Each creature healed this way captures one from its opponent. Um, I'm not particularly fond of this card. I mean, I'm sure there are ways to make it go off that benefit you much more than the opponent, but we'll just have to see how that one works out. Grey Augur, Squire Alice, Rothias the Fierce, Armageddon Cloak, Sergeant Zekiel, Doorstep to Heaven, and a Sanctum, Yixola Bolter. There's a Mars creature popping up over here in Sanctum. Looks pretty neat. Now it's in the Mars house that we find the card of cards. First off, we have Quixel Plague Master. Uh, feeding Pit, Xanthix Harvester, Double, with an Iron X Rebel, which reads play, ready each of Iron X Rebel's Mars neighbors. So with two Xanthix Harvesters, you could drop those immediately, throw down the Iron X Rebel between both of them, ready and reap toys. So a little bit of burst right there. And then we have a Mars, Grim Locust Ducks. Mars was not in Worlds Collide or in any set that had Grim Locust Ducks. And now here it is, the Mars Anomaly. The Grim Reaper. The Grim Reaper in House Mars. If you are haunted, the Grim Reaper enters play ready. You are haunted if there are 10 or more cards in your discard pile. After reap, purge an enemy creature and a friendly creature. Now this is, again, so cool 
because Mars was not in Worlds Collide, where anomalies first appeared, so it wasn't possible to pull a Mars anomaly. And yet here we are with an Unchained deck that has a Mars Grim Reaper. So that's super cool. I was very hyped to be able to pull this at Keyforge Celebration. Yulik Mega Mouth, Mind Warper, Custom Virus, Combat Pheromones, and Phosphor Stars. So as you can see, these decks are just kind of weird. Um, they often don't feel very synergistic or cohesive. I mean, just because you're getting cards from all sets that aren't necessarily meant to synergize with each other. So sometimes you'll pull really busted houses, like at Keyforge Celebration, I saw some pretty busted unchained houses. But uh, most of the time, I think you're just going to be pulling stuff that doesn't always synergize very well with each other. But either way, there's still a lot of fun. It's really cool to see these cards come together and pull lots of Mavericks on the same deck, and sometimes even an anomaly that didn't exist before, such as a Mars Grim Reaper. All right, let's move on to the third deck. All right, so this third deck's token creature is the Brabnar Four Power Warrior. Warrior cannot reap unless there are no enemy creatures in play. Um, so it's a very fighting-oriented uh, token creature, and there's a card in this deck that synergizes especially well with Warrior, and we'll get there in just a moment. And we're actually starting this one off with a Maverick, straight right out the gate, a Saurian Echo Reflector. This creature gains your opponent's keys cost plus three. Usually shows up in Star Alliance, and it just looks cool to see it in Saurian. This deck has six Mavericks, by the way, which is the most Mavericks that I opened in one of my Unchained decks. Tribune Pompatus is back. Another Maverick, the Old Tinker in Saurian. Elusive, after reap, discard a card from your hand, draw a card. Ultras Rostrum, ISS Indominus, Siren Horn, double. Sagittarius Gaze with the damage pip landing in the perfect spot. Favor of Rex, Calipigian Ideal, Gargantadon. And another Maverick, the Saurian Stormcrawler. Very cool to see. And then another Maverick, going into Brabnar, the Brabnar Ammonia Clouds. Pretty nice spot for it, dealing some damage in that Brabnar house. Uh, the Floor is Lava, double. Heave the Huge. The Shattered Throne, double. Pelf, who has Skirmish, and after fight your opponent loses one. Shorty, Alaka, Kulf the Quiet. And another Maverick, the Brabnar Ancient Bear. Another wonderful, wonderful spot for this card to show up. War Song, Enhanced with an Ember. It's always so weird to see older cards from sets that didn't have enhancements to have enhancements, like this Ember on the War Song. All right, now this is the card that the Warrior goes so well with. It's a Maverick in Untamed. I think it's usually supposed to show up in Brabnar. Endless, ho <coughs> Endless Hordes. For each enemy creature, make a token creature, ready it, and have it fight that enemy creature, ignoring Taunt. Resolve these fights one at a time. So this card is absolutely insane. Every single time I played this card, it did so much work. It almost acted as a one-sided board wipe, um, especially with Warrior, just dropping all these four-power creatures that fight instantly, ignore Taunt when they fight. And this is, this is the one scenario where I wish this card wasn't a Maverick. I wish it was still an House Brabnar for this deck. And it's because of this, because of the War Song. That would be such a massive burst of Ember in addition to the board control. So I really hope to at some point be able to pull a deck with a proper Brobnar Endless Hordes, maybe hopefully Warrior and something else good to go along with it, like a Brick Nasty or something. But this, this card is a lot of fun. Uh, Witch of the Dawn, Chonkers with a bonus Ember Pip, Lumalu, Gloriana's Attendant, The Feathered Shaman, Imprinted Mermook, Harmonia, Roxador, Soldiers to Flowers, Witch of the Wilds, and Perilous Wild. So this deck is fun just for all those Mavericks. Um, also for the huge Endless Hordes play with the Warrior is always a lot of fun. Um, double Shattered Throne is nice. Double Floor of Lava is pretty cool as well. Um, but once again, the deck just kind of, you just play out cards and hope they do stuff. There's no, I mean, obviously I haven't played with these decks a whole lot, so there might be a lot of cool synergies that I haven't found yet. But so far, there's just not a ton of synergy. Um, let me see. For the Soldiers to Flowers, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, hold on a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine untamed creatures to go with that, go with that Soldiers to Flowers. So, I mean, the deck does have stuff going for it, but not enough to make it, like, super competitive on an unchained level or whatever. It's still a lot of fun, though. Alrighty, and here we go with the final unchained deck I was able to get my hands on at Keyforge Celebration. This deck's token creature is Defender, Sanctum, 2 power, 1 armor. Simple as that. Just uh, 
just a dude, just a body on your board, on your battle line. Um, the name of this deck is Moldy Tango Katarina with Sanctum, Dis, and Shadows. All right, so starting it off with the Sanctum, we have Sigil of Brotherhood, Celestial Gorm, which reads Omni, destroy Celestial Gorm, return each other artifact to its owner's hand. Battle Evangelist at 3 power, 2 armor, after a fight, make a token creature. Urine the Circumspect, Red Hand Registry, Gizzleheart's Wrath with a capture, Emberheart, Hope All Night, a Sanctum Ancient Bear. So I ended up opening two Maverick Ancient Bears, one in the Brabnar, one in the Sanctum, which is kind of funny. Uh, Lady Maxina, Hollowed Blaster, Take Hostages, then onto the Dis, we just saw Befuddle in uh, its proper house. We have Sinestra, Implosion, Two Drekkers, Flame Wreathed, Collar of Subordination, True Brew, Double True Brew, actually, which is kind of insane, Stealer of Souls, Life Ward, Tendrils of Pain, and then into the Shadows with a Maverick, a Maverick Symposium, and this is actually one of the um, mistakes that the algorithm had for Keyforge Celebration. This is actually the artwork for Hedonistic Intent, which is a... Uh, a Saurian card. Um, so for the for this Winds of Exchange batch, the Hidden, Hedonistic Intent and Symposium, which is also a Saurian card, they both had the same art. Both ha had the Hedonistic Intent art. So they know about it. They're going to get it fixed up for when Winds of Exchange properly releases. But it's just kind of funny. Gambling Den, Double Borrow, Tempting Offer, Pestering Blow, Hit and Run, Lethal Distraction, Little Niff, Whistling Darts, and two copies of Treasure Maps. Um, so one of the cool things that you may have noticed about these Unchained decks is that you can get rares way more frequently than normal. Um, so I mean, you saw the double treasure map, you saw the double true brew. Somebody at KFC 22 actually opened a deck with four copies of Mimic Gel. Uh, Mimic Gel is a rare. You can only, in normal decks, you can only get up to three copies of the same rare in normal decks. Uh, so he opened up four Mimic Gels in one deck, which is just absolutely bonkers. But this deck is pretty fun. Has this Maverick Shadows Symposium with the wrong artwork, which is kind of weird. Um, double True Brew. So yeah, it's fun stuff overall. And yeah, that's my fourth Unchained deck. So yeah, that's going to be it for today. Um, I just wanted to show you my Unchained decks from KFC 2022 and all the sort of bonkers, crazy things that can happen in Unchained decks from getting cards from the entire Keyforge card pool to pulling lots of rares, lots of Mavericks. They're a lot of fun. I can't wait to see what sort of things people pull in the future. Um, for my GameFound pledge, I did order an entire display of these Unchained decks, so you bet I'll be opening up those and seeing what's in there. But yeah, for now, let me know what you guys think of these decks down in the comments and the sort of shenanigans they might be able to get up to. Um, and I can't wait to see you all again in the next one. See you later.